Well, my name's Andrew Tate. I am four times kickboxing world champion and all around nice guy. Yes, you are, Andrew. Um, so there's been a bit of controversy lately with you, some of your statements on Twitter. Could you talk us through it? Yeah, I think, I think Twitter surprised me because I only really took to Twitter when Trump won the election. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what inspired me to tweet because I saw how upset everyone was for no reason. I'm a massive Trump fan and, and I started to tweet a lot more then. And Twitter is a dangerous place, man. I don't know where these humans exist. These people who, who argue with me, I really don't know where these people dwell under a bridge somewhere. But Twitter really showed me that the world is full of idiots. Mm. And uh, <laughs> since then, I've, I've been stating my opinions, but I deliberately put them in a very brash, abrasive manner. So that is deliberate. You are like amping it up slightly. Well, I don't think I'm amping up the opinion. Mm. I'm not changing my opinion in any form. Yeah. I'm just putting it in an abrasive manner. And yeah. I think that life is an abrasive place. Yeah. I, I think nowadays we're all taught it's not and we're all taught it shouldn't be. Yeah. But that's absolute bullshit. The reality of life is that it is abrasive. If you're in a car crash, that's abrasive. Someone yeah. dies, bang, this is how the world is. And I've, I've never believed it for, to ever be any other way. Yeah. So if I want to say something, I'm going to say it exactly how I think it. And that's going to be abrasive to a snowflake. And I apologize. <laughs> but. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, but there's the, specifically the depression stuff seems to have set off an insane firestorm across social media. Yeah, the, the reason for that is very obvious to me. Yeah. And the reason that the depression thing has upset so many people is because depression is an externalization. And externalizing your problems is the number one problem, is the number one plague of, of, of the modern society. Mm -hmm. Everyone's looking for a reason to externalize their issue. Hmm. Uh, I drink too much alcohol, so I have alcoholism. No, you get up. You put, get money from this thing, you put your clothes on, you go down to the shop, you talk to the shopkeeper, you choose what you want, you put it in the bag, you walk home, you unlock the door, you go, you pour it in a glass and you drink it. That's your fault. Yeah. Don't say it's alcoholism. That is you making a bad decision. Oh, I, I, I'm obese because of thyroid or some other crap. Like the thyroid makes a 6% difference overall to your body weight. Even if you have a thyroid condition, which mm. you don't, you continue to eat cake and ice cream. Stop talking shit. So everyone's just looking for a reason to externalize. And depression's a fantastic way to externalize. Because yeah. it doesn't matter what's wrong in your life. You can blame depression. I'm a loser. My life's shit. I don't have a girlfriend. I ain't got any money. I don't have a good job. I'm, still, uh, I'm stuck at home. No one cares about me. I'm depressed. Well, you're depressed because of your situation, which you're pre refusing to change. And you're, you think your situation is because you're depressed. And people got the wrong way around in my mind. So, what, what, you know, like... You know, say you were running the depression camp, how would you get people out of their depress depression? I, I, I get them out of the depression by making them understand the harsh realities of the world. And the harsh realities of the world is that life doesn't give a fuck about you. Life doesn't give a shit about you. Yeah. If, if, if a lion goes to hunt some gazelle, let's say you're a lion and you're chilling, and you see a whole bunch of antelope in the corner, you're, when the lions start chasing the antelope, they get the slowest, weakest antelope. They get the babies, they get the one who's sick, they get the one who's got a broken leg. They don't give a fuck. They're not going to be like, oh, well, that one's sick, so we can't eat that one. We got, well, that one didn't have breakfast, so it's unfair to chase that one down. The lion doesn't care. The lion mm -hmm. gets the, the slowest antelope. And life's mm -hmm. exactly the same. So people would argue that we're not animals, and like, that, that's the difference between humans and the animal kingdom. That, it's empathy. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's actually an evolutionary advantage to be empathetic to people. I completely understand that. that but yeah. my, my analogy is regarding not other people as lions, but as life as a lion. Okay. Life is a lion. Yeah. So you, you have to decide which antelope you want to be. Because just like the lion, life doesn't give a shit who's at the back. Mm. And you have to decide if you want to be at the back and hope the lion's going to feel sorry for you when it's hungry. And you can tell him all your excuses just before he rips your throat out. Or you can make sure you're the one at the front by any means necessary. And that's a choice you have to make. Mm, mm. And when people truly understand that and they stop externalizing their problems, then they believe they... There's, there's two choices. You either externalize your issues or you, or you believe you have influence over your issues. There's no yeah, other, there's no other choice. There's agency in your life. You know, you, you, you can change the way your life is. Absolutely. So yeah. I, I'm depressed. I'm unhappy. Well, why are you unhappy? Because X, Y, Z. Well, who, are you going to change them? Because if you're mm. not, no one's going to come into your life. Superman's mm. not going to kick the door down and say... Ta-da! I'm going to make you fit and give you a good job and a hot woman. That's not going to happen. You should have a show doing that. You should just go around <laughs> kicking people's doors in. <laughs> so I'm going to change your life. But pe people don't want to do that. People don't want the hard work. That's how they got depressed in the first place. And they want to have an excuse. And the reason that people yeah. got so triggered and upset by what I said is because I attack their belief system. It's like attacking yeah. someone's God. Yeah. It's, their, it's their worldview. It, it shapes everything they do. Like if you believe in God or you believe in ghosts or you believe in depression, Everything you do is influenced by this belief. And when you attack someone's belief, they're going to get very desperate to defend it. But there is like a very large body of medical evidence that, you know, or medical opinion yeah. that uh, uh, says depression does exist. Well, that's true. But then yeah. also, funnily enough, 
since I tweeted it, I did quite a bit of research, and there's also a large body of evidence saying that depression doesn't exist. Oh, okay. Um, feel free to, I don't want to quote it exactly, but I think his name yeah. is Lauren Mosher. Um, he was the head of schizophrenic research uh, at the Institute of Mental Health. Mm. So he's like the guy. Mm. And he concluded that depression is not a real disease because in 100% of cases, there's nothing actually wrong with the brain. He says, I can't detect anything wrong with the brain. All the brain scans they show you in depressed people, mm. you can just take a, a brain scan of someone having an orgasm. Those are chemicals in the brain. You can, you can see it. That does not mean that the person's got a mental disorder. Mm. They, you can see the depression in their brain because they've accepted they're depressed. Mm. The, the, the brain didn't change and then make them the depressed. People got the wrong way around. Mm. So yeah, of course, everyone feels depressed temporarily. I've been depressed. Yeah. Bad things happen to everybody. But you have a choice of let, let it consume so, you. How did you snap out of your, your unhappiness, depression? Well, so, uh, I snapped out of it because I understand that this, it's the only choice there is. You I either, mean, what, was there a method you did? You know, like, I don't think there's a specific method. You okay. just have to be... You just have to be harsh about the realities of the world. Yeah. Life doesn't give a fuck about you. Everyone mm. who you're crying to your problems about doesn't really care. <laughs> and you have, to, you have to get it over with. You know, like bad things happen to everybody. They're yeah. going to happen to everybody. Yeah. Uh, and then we all die in the end. And then we all die. <laughs> so you have two choices. You can let the bad things consume you, or you can wake up one day and think, ah, enough of this. And you've got to push forward. Mm. And the, rea the crazy thing is when I say that to people, people say to me, oh, you're crazy. That is exactly how the entire world functioned until this new think bullshit came along. Mm. Until this new age crap came along, no one ever sat down and gave up. You look at World War II, and people dying all over the place, who gave up? Everyone just pushed, keep calm, carry on. Yeah. There's bombs today, got to go to work. Yeah. That's because that's how people w were raised. Yeah. But now this new think garbage has come and everyone tells me that I'm wrong. Well, we have a whole, you're asking for medical proof. The medical proof is the entire, entirety of human history where nobody ever was too depressed to work because they had to fucking eat mm. and people got on with things. So I yeah, think- Yeah, you, you've got to eat, you kind of do get up. Well, no, yeah, no one's depressed in Yemen because they're, they're, they're too, you know? Well, it might be post-traumatic stress disorder, which is a different, a different thing. thing. Yeah, Com so, entirely. You know, because you can go through traumatic experiences yeah. and they can yeah. affect you. Yeah. How, how would you differentiate between well, that? Well, absolutely, that's exactly it. I would, I would, when I was saying depression, I'm talking about the 19 year old in their bedroom with nothing wrong with their life who's saying they're depressed. Yeah. That's completely different to post-traumatic stress yeah. disorder, in my mind. Obviously yeah. bad things can happen to people and they can affect you. Still, I believe you're a master of your own mind, but I think that's a much harder battle depending mm. on what you went through. Mm. But it's really interesting you said that. I watched a TV show about a German girl who survived a plane crash in the 1970s in Peru. You seen it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't seen the documentary. I know the one yeah. where she lived by the river. She, had, she yeah. went and she followed the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the plane blew up in the air or something. It crashed. When she, she was the only survivor, she woke up. She saw her decapitated mother next to her still strapped in the seat. Everyone's dead. She starts walking through the jungle trying to eat. Ends up because of her uh, wounds, gets infection. Uh, ends up sure she's going to die. Passes out in a clearing, gets saved, blah, blah, blah. And... Uh, they were talking to her what happened once she'd been saved and she obviously eventually made it back to Germany. Her, f her family originally thought she was dead. Um, and she said, well, what happened when you got back? And he said, well, well my dad tried to, to sell a book but no one bought it. So he told me I had to get a job because we needed, we needed work, we needed money. Mm. Um, so about two weeks later I was working, like doing what? Oh, in a shop? And like, oh, did you go to a psychiatrist? She goes, no. We didn't do that. No. Like, you, you know what I mean? So yeah. this is one of the most dramatic things you can possibly go through. And she just went to a store, got a job, and, and got over it. Obviously, she had her own personal battle, but she pushed forward. And now she's doing an interview at age 80 saying, yeah, well, you just have to get on with life. Yeah. So how, how are, and people are going to tell me I'm wrong. I'm like, this, this is the evidence that it is possible. So it's crazy. But were you surprised by the vehemence of the reaction on Twitter? I don't think I was surprised. Mm. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't surprised because I know I'm attacking people's belief system. People mm. want a reason to be, that people are a failure and they have to externalize their reason. They don't want to wake up and go, I fucked up. This is my one life and I wasted it. People don't want to do that. Mm. They, want to, they want to think, well, I didn't follow my dreams because, thing. and it's not, just, it's not just depression, it's everything. Oh, I don't make money because of Jeremy Corbyn's not in the, in the prime minister. If Jeremy Corbyn was prime minister, I'd push a Lambo. No, you would, nothing would change. Nothing, you'd mm. still be a shit muncher, but they don't want to accept these realities. Because it's a very, very interesting thing, sorry to interject this, no but, um, there was um, some survey of, you know, the richest people in China. Yeah. And they basically were the richest people, you know, like all through the communist yeah. era, th th everyone went poor. And yeah. then now it's like the people who were rich in the turn of the 20th century are rich again because they kind of got... It's a that, mindset. Yeah, the mindset to kind of how to make money, w whatever situation, like you said, you know, you'd be pushing a Lambo. Absolutely. You know, mm. and, and, and if you're going to try and externalize, like I said, the depression mm. thing, or you're going to externalize on politics, you're going to externalize mm. the country you live in, you externalize anything. People in Romania do this all the time. Oh, but my government's corrupt. That's why I have no money. I said, he has a Bentley. 
You know, mm. may, maybe his family has money, maybe, but not all of them. Some mm. of them have pulled it off. So it's, it's down to you as an individual. Mm. People but, don't want to accept individual responsibility because mm. then they have to be responsible for their failures, and that's the truth. But were you secretly happy that it kind of blew up? I like loved it. <laughs> like the, the great thing about it is people were trying to give it to me, like the celebrities and stuff. And yeah. I, I, I bet they were sitting there thinking, oh, I'm going to get him. But I, I cannot explain how much I didn't give a fuck. And, I've, and I'm not, that's not bravado. Yeah. I, that was just me laughing. <laughs> I'm just sitting on yeah. Twitter laughing at the phone. It was the best. It was hilarious. Like there was, there's, I'm 100% sure there's not a word anyone could type that will genuinely upset me anyway. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm, I'm above that. Like people yeah. have tried. I've got them all on there yeah. trying to quote my dead father and everything they possibly can. And it's just like, whatever. Like, I, it all, it's all water off a duck back to me. But yeah. no, I, I, I enjoyed every second of it. I meant what I said. Everyone was saying to me, when are you going to be sorry? Or uh, I think a couple of famous people said, I guarantee he, he retracts this. And I was just like, mate, I guarantee I don't. I'm doubling down. Like, I, I mean what I said. So I'm sticking by it to the yeah. end. You know, you can quote me for the rest of my life. I mean what I said. And, and, and I wasn't 1% upset yeah. by the backlash. But do, do, you, do you think, you know, people said that there's an element of trollishness about it. Do you, do, do you kind of agree with that a bit that you kind of were baiting you kind of baiting everyone because it was the sacred cow, well yeah because yeah because yeah, pe people call me a troll but i don't see myself as a troll because i say what i genuinely think mm. i don't wake up and they're gonna change my opinion to annoy this person i don't hide behind an avatar you know yeah. i am andrew tate and yeah. this is what i think yeah now once i've upset them sure i'll twist the knife you know <laughs> <laughs> once everyone's crying their eyes out you know, I, I, it's then salt. it's fun. Then it's just like salt in the wound. <laughs> but until that point, I'm just tweeting what I think, yeah. you know, and I, I have no idea who's going to bite. I, I've said that depression to him for the last five years. I've been saying the same thing on Facebook for years. Mm -hmm. For this time, it went nuts. You, yeah, you why, never, why do you think that is? You never really understand the internet. I have no idea why. Okay. But it's just how it kicked off. I, I've been saying the same thing for years and years and years. So I, when I tweet, I never know what's going to kick off. I'm sure it's going to happen again. And I'm going to double down on what I said. And I'm not going to be sorry. And I'm going to mean it. So it is what it is. But, but, um, because you are famous anyway in, in, in your circles, you know, yeah. you're a very accomplished athlete, et cetera. Yeah. Would you, you know, some people would be trying to parlay this into a bigger kind of fame. Would you, are you going to try and do that? I don't know. I mean, I never intended, like I said, I started tweeting after the Trump thing. I had 12,000 followers, yeah. now I have 28. Yeah. So I've grown, that's, that's not a huge following at all in mm. the world of Twitter, but I'm growing quite fast. But I, I really don't have a, such a long term plan. I mean, I, I do enjoy it. Yeah. I, I enjoy seeing how many people I upset. You know, like seeing everyone getting emotional over what I say. I, I think Twitter can be but quite fun. Quite, is, is this something, because you were a chess champion as a child. Yeah. Is that, and chess is quite, um, you're trying to manipulate the other player into yeah, yeah. you're making mistakes and losing their, yeah. etc. Um, is that kind of, are you trying to manipulate everyone into I don't giving know. you a cheap thrill in a way? I, don't, I, I really don't know. I, yeah. I don't think I'm thinking that much into it. I really, yeah. everything I'm saying, it's just things I genuinely believe. And yeah. I know they're controversial. I know they're unorthodox. Mm. But I do genuinely believe them. Mm, and mm. I was raised with these beliefs. And, and I don't see how, as much as people told me this was the case, what's an absolute fallacy is people saying that my beliefs are harmful. I really don't believe that. If, if you don't believe in ghosts, you're never going to be haunted by a ghost. You, you, you may have problems or you may see something or whatever, but you're never going to be sitting there afraid of a ghost because you don't believe in ghosts. So I saw something in the corner. I must have been tired. I'm going mm. back to sleep. End of the ghost story. Yeah. As opposed to my house is haunted, get an exorcist, all this bullshit yeah. because you believe in it. So I don't believe in depression. So when bad things have happened to me, when my father died or whatever, I never allowed myself to wake up and think, maybe I have depression. Because it, it, it wasn't even in my realm of, of possibility. Yeah. It wasn't even ever in my sphere. It was like, I was, I'm upset about this and times a healer and whatever, whatever. I've got work to do. Let's get up. Let's get done. Yeah. And, and so I don't see why that's detrimental to anybody. But of course, people are too stupid to, to understand that very basic so way. Who's been your, your most famous detractor so far? I've this. had J.K. Rowling two or three times get upset by okay. me. Yeah. But, she gets a set quite a lot. So. Well, J.K. Rowling, the, the, the first time I upset J.K. Rowling was pointing out the pertinently obvious is that she's obsessed with Trump because her husband's a loser. See, what, what I said was, I said, I've never seen, I've said this, what I said is, if my girlfriend constantly tweeted at some other dude, even if it was hate, I'd walk in the room and say, look, hate and love are too closely linked. I know that because you barely like me. So you so, think JK Rowling- Oh, she wants just, him bad, yeah. so bad. <laughs> So I was saying she's obsessed with Trump because he's an alpha and she's the most alpha man she can find and yeah. her husband must be a loser. And yeah. I, I said this before seeing her husband. So I pre-diagnosed her condition. I don't know who her husband is. But no one does yeah. until I Googled it. So oh, okay. I said all this in advance. Yeah. And then she was, said some bullshit back. I really, I mean, even for her, it was a very weak reply. Yeah. And then I thought, you know what? Let me, maybe I look stupid here. Let me just quickly Google. And boom, instantly correct. Like really, like oh, the okay. big, yeah. He's a complete waste of space, little worm. So I, I just, I'm sure you're a very nice guy. 
So, so, so <laughs> fuck you. Anyway, so, <laughs> so he was a worm. So I tweeted a picture of him, uh, and everyone was like, "Oh, Tate's right. Tate's right. She's obsessed with Trump." Da-da. So she, I, I proved that she's desperate for Trump's dick, which is the first thing. And then the depression thing upset her again. Yeah, absolute proof. There. Absolute <laughs> proof. C- c- conclusive. <laughs> Um, and then the, uh, the, the, tr- the depression thing upset her because, of course, billionaire JK, who managed to make untold money with her shit story about a little wizard on a train platform, managed, it suffers from depression. I'm sure you have such real problems in your life, JK. What uh, self-indulgent bullshit? What kind of self-indulgent moron do you have to be in her position and pretend that there's anything depressing about your life? You lucked out. You won the lottery times a million. No one really should give a shit about your story. Please drop the act. Would, would you sleep with JK Rowling? I don't know if she'd be ready for what happens to her. I can't believe I just asked. It would be, it would be one hell of a book. <laughs> I'll leave her that. I'll show her a magic spell she's never seen. You're going to lose all your Harry Potter fans here. I've, you know, I've never even... I've, I've, never, I've never read it. Neither have I. I've no, never read it. You know? no, but yeah. I don't need to to know it's bollocks. Yeah. You know, like, there's, sto- there's books out there about Stalingrad. That shit happened. Yeah. You know, you want to read a book, you're going to read yeah. about the real heroes. Oh, like, wickety pickety. Like, but that's off. a very, actually, it's a really good point. You picked up, did you think we like kind of mythologize too many wrong things in this culture now? And we kind of ignore the people that, like you said, the guys at Stalingrad. You Absolutely. Mean, yeah. Modern culture's fucked. Yeah. Like, I mean, 99% of the women who I date, if I mention Stalingrad, what's Stalingrad? So people, these people died for you. Yeah, but it was ages ago. They don't give a fuck. Like, imagine being in the trench and someone goes, we're going to show you a clip from 2017 discussing the, what you're going through right now as you starve. And it's some bimbo <laughs> sitting there going, like, yeah. like, isn't that crazy? Yeah, but is she hot, though? She is hot. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I, I forgive her for the night. But this is the reality of, of the world, and it's nuts. Yeah. And people idolize absolute inane shit. You yeah. know, I, like, I'm, I'm against the music industry as a whole. I'm, I'm very convinced the music industry is a perfect example of how to control morons. Like, I, I sit there and I see Rihanna, and she's got the best life ever, and she's rich as fuck. And it's like, how, does she even play an instrument? Probably not. Does she write the music? No. Like, the, it's all produced for her, and they bring her in the room, and they say, okay, we're going to make a whole bunch of money. Here, here's your lyrics. And she says, work, 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 mm. work. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Is this how you become? Like, it's, it's crazy. And then it's kind of sold to people as this. You know. And they'll play it on the radio so many times everyone likes it regardless. Yeah. And then people will buy it. And then she'll go do a concert and there'll be people in that crowd like she's Jesus. And I'm just sitting there thinking, that's the most, I've never been to a concert in my life, but I'm just like, what's it? Fucking, she doesn't even play an instrument. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? You can listen on YouTube for free. Like, if the world lost his mind. But this is the world. And like you said, no one gives a shit about the important stuff. Everyone's concerned with this absolute garbage. And, yeah. and, and this is, it's a big tapestry. It's a web. But, you know, for the same reason you externalize your problems, it's the same reason you idolize someone else or externalize your, your happiness sources. Mm. I was on a, I eat alone quite often because I travel the world all the time. For about the last two years, I've really even had a house. I've been all over the place. Okay. So I was eating in a restaurant on my own. And I heard a, a, a guy and a girl in there on a date. I was just sitting there listening for about an hour. Just listening, yeah. just chilling, <laughs> listening that on my guy, phone, just finished. whatever. <laughs> and uh, they were talking for an hour, and everything they spoke about as they got to know each other was the absolute achievements of other people. Well, I like this band. Oh, I like that band too. Or have you ever been here? Like everything they talked about, nothing was I've done this yeah. or I want to do this. It was, have you seen this movie? What do you think of this? Or do you do this? And it was just everything everyone else has done. And it's amazing that if you were to make a movie about that person's life, they're not even the main character in their own fucking life. They're just a consumer of everyone else's achievements. And this is how people are going through the world nowadays. Mm. And they're wondering why they're unhappy. Well, if you're externalizing your happiness to some football team who doesn't even know you exist, you know, mm. they, they have to win for you to be happy. Like if you're going to externalize everything and, and have no self-control and just be a feather in the wind, well, then life's going to kick your ass and you're going to end up a shit muncher and, and you, that's where you're going to end up. It's so tough. Mm. So, but is, you know, some might say that it's quite easy for you to say this because you're a high achieving guy who's done well in everything they've attempted. Yeah. Like a lot of people, you know, they meet higher barriers and stuff like that. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I had a talent for for kickboxing, that's that's arguable, but without all the work I put in, I would not have, I would not have achieved what I've achieved. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone who's less talented than me, could they have been one time world champion as opposed to four? I believe they probably could have if they'd been through the shit I went through. Mm. I, the reason I anger somebody, everybody so much is because I'm not from a privileged background. My father was a world-level chess player, mm. but he was also a straight G, which means when he got paid, he's in the casino with the women. He didn't give a fuck about, like, he, he was very clear, like, you sons got to make your own way in the world. Like, you've got food for today, so I'm out of here. Like, yeah. he, that's how he was. So we had, and when he died, he didn't leave us a penny. So there was no kind of trust fund, no kind. We didn't yeah. even have a wealthy upbringing. We came from a very poor upbringing. Mm. When we moved to England, we were in a homeless shelter. 
for the first year as we were trying to find council housing and we're growing a single mother council estate. Yeah. I've got every excuse everyone else has got to be a criminal asshole and I'm not. Yeah. So, you know, and people go, oh, well, you're lucky you could kickbox. I said, getting up and running to this gym because my mom didn't have a car and we couldn't afford the bus and running four miles training then running four miles home is not luck. You could have done that and didn't want to do that. So, mm. you know, people may meet barriers, but if you genuinely apply yourself, you'll do So how, how would you change this? Because this, you know, if, it, if it's how you say it is, you know, most people are just gonna go home tonight, watch, you know, whatever yeah. idiot sees on the yeah. TV and never do anything, just sit on the internet complaining. Yeah, well, the, the world's fucked. Yeah. Society's, society's finished. I, and, and I don't it's think- It's a very dark no, vision. No, I'm telling you, the Western world is finished. And yeah. I genuinely believe the Western world is finished. Yeah. We've reached a level of decadence now where I genuinely believe in 200 years from now, China is going to be sitting there looking at all the Chinese people, which will still be full of Chinese people. All the people in China mm. will sit there reading a history book about how Europe used to rule the world and how we completely ruined it. You, you cannot, com the dangerous thing about this liberal new age weak think is not that it exists, it's that it exists in one part of the planet. You know, in China, if you're a chip muncher, you make the iPhones and everyone knows that's what you're supposed to do and that's your life and you're happy to have that job and if you're not, fine, you might jump off a bridge or whatever. But if you otherwise, you turn up to work on fucking time and you make the iPhones. And the smart people do the smart people shit and that's just how society is and that's why they're functioning as a country. When you, get a, when you have a society like this one where everyone believes you're entitled, no one wants to do any hard work, mm. you know, everything goes down the drain, it can't, you can't compete in the global but If everyone sector. believes they're entitled but actually would put in the hard work, then that wouldn't be, that would be a great society, wouldn't it? So maybe we've got half the equation, right? They're just uh... Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, obviously not everyone. For there to be a winner, there has to be a loser. This is, and this is the truth about the world. Not yeah. everyone can have a Lambo. Then what the fuck, it wouldn't work. Yeah, but no one like, will see it. Exactly. But for there to be a winner, there has to be a loser. But I believe everybody has a conscious decision to make. Mm. And I'm not just talking financially. I know it's easy to talk finances. I'm not talking financially. If you're a winner, if you live a life you're happy with, if you wake up happy, you win. That, that's the truth. Mm. Uh, for me, happiness was kickboxing and money and girls and all that typical rap mm. music shit. Yeah. That's my thing. But if you're happy meditating and eating carrots and, and you've managed to pull that off and your rent's still paid, then you win. Like, I'm not gonna sit and tell you that's wrong. If, it, yeah. if you're happy, that's genuinely what it is. So to, to, defining success isn't a financial thing for me. It's a, mm. it's a happiness thing. But this brings back to the depression. I think a lot of people think there's something missing from their life, which then they kind of pass into I'm depressed. Yeah. You know, when actually if they kind of got up and did something. Well, it, you know, this yeah. is a normal, I think this is a normal human emotion. It's normal for a human. We're, we've evolved in a certain way. You know, for a long time, we didn't live in societies. Mm. You're normal to want something, to find something, to get something, hunt or gather, whatever. Mm. You know, but you have to decide what that is and you have to go get it or you don't. Um, and that's, and that's the, the mm. truth about it. To sit around crying about it and believing taking a pill is gonna make that go away. To me is a name. To mm. me, it really is madness. And mm. the, the fact that J.K. Rowling disagrees with me proves that she's a fucking idiot. So would you go drinking with her? Absolutely, I'd love it. <laughs> I'd happily sit and drink with the old lady and let her know how much she's desperate for she's Trump. She's not that old. <laughs> she's desperate for Trump. <laughs> That's a fact. Would you turn up in a blonde wig and pretend to be Trump? <laughs> I'd let her know. I just say fake news all the time while she get wet. <laughs> we love you, J.K. Rowling. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I think you're a dickhead. If Trump were to say, listen, baby, your stories are shit, but I'll give you some. She'd be all like, okay, don't tell anyone. And she'd be round there behind her husband's back, taking it. 100% solid fact. She's desperate. <laughs> I well, know I'm right. We'll, we'll, we'll have to interview her and get, get interview her. I know, I know I'm right. I just know I'm right. There's yeah. no reason for a woman to be so obsessed with another male unless there's a sexual connotation. Women yeah. are Maybe apathetic. she just thinks he's dangerous. Nah, women are apathetic yeah. to things. They don't, she doesn't give a shit about the world. She doesn't fucking care. She's yeah, because what was that tweet you said? Like, yeah. you know, celebrities don't give a she fuck She doesn't about give a shit. Yeah. She, she's, she's a billionaire. She doesn't care. She mm. doesn't think he's dangerous. She's sitting there and in her confused, small, old woman brain, she doesn't work. She can't work out why she's so obsessed with this person. Oh, I don't know, with her dry vagina. She can't work it out. But if Big Trump was in the room, she would know what's going down. She'd know <laughs> instantly. She'd start undressing or something. Now it makes sense. This is what I've always really wanted. Maybe they could write a book together. <laughs> Maybe. But I'm telling you now, JK, I've mm. never seen a woman more thirsty. Yeah. Thirsty, desperate. What, what, what's your opinion on transgenderism and the, the whole issues surrounding that at the moment? If you live 50 years as a man and then wake up on a Tuesday at 11 a.m. and decide you're a chick, you have a mental illness. And this is really that simple to me. Because no matter what you try and do, and no matter how much the left pretend they embrace you, you are never going to be a woman. You are still a man trying to adopt the appearance of a woman but you're a man. Mm. And if you believe deep inside yourself, the only way you're gonna find fulfillment and happiness in this life is to, is to go through this bullshit to end up nowhere and still be a dude, mm. 
Mm. You have a mental condition. It's, so, it's mm. someone looking for something and they don't quite know what it is. And they're just unhappy and they think, oh, maybe if I wear a wig, maybe, maybe it'll all be okay. <laughs> like, but if it's not harming anyone, then what was But it is harming problem? everyone. Well, well, it's not harming me. No, so it's not harming you. There's a guy who lives around the corner from me, wears a, a bikini. And it's actually a crime against fashion, but I mean, it's not. <laughs> no, it's, it's not harming you directly. I understand yeah. that. But it's harming the social fabric of our society. The social fabric of our society is getting eroded to the point where people are so, they're fed this idea that they must be so accepting of everything. Mm. We have five and six year olds trying to pretend they're transgender. A five-year-old doesn't even know his address, doesn't even know his phone number. And you want to tell me this five-year-old's intelligent enough to work out he's not a dude? Mm. He's never even fucked anybody, he's never had a boner. How is, he, how is this person intelligent and grown up and mature enough to make a decision on gender? And, and, and this comes from everyone being told they must accept it at all costs. And when you start getting a society that must accept ideas at all costs and never challenge them, that is so what, damaging what you, to the social fabric. So, so what would you do, you know, um, if someone came to you and said that they're transgender, they're, you know, they're thinking of, you know, changing gender? I tell them that they're, I tell them that they're wrong. Okay. And I would, I, I would tell them that you're wrong. I would actually still say you're, I agree with your right to go through that process if you believe so. Mm. But I'm not going to participate in the delusion that you're a female. Mm. The difference between my society and current society is that transgenders would still exist. However, in my society, everyone would still be calling them he. Mm. Like, well, he, you're a he who looks because, like a she, the, the, because that's what you are. Yeah, but, and to try and propagate your delusions on others is a dangerous society. For me to wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. You tell me I'm not Jesus, you're a bigot. I'm Jesus. Everyone, I'm Jesus. Everyone would just say, shut up, Andrew. Yeah. Like, but why is my delusion not accepted, but their delusion is? F funnily enough, just to interject, you can see this on our YouTube channel. There is a man who is a, both a transvestite and thinks he's Jesus. <laughs> So we've, we've got, got it all going on. Yeah, we've got that covered. <laughs> but, but, but this is my point. These but, people, I mean, yeah, these yeah, delusions, they want to propagate their delusions yeah. and society, the social fabric is telling us we have to swallow them. That's not acceptable. All ideas are open for challenge. Mm. My ideas are open for challenge. You want to challenge my ideas, I completely encourage you. I never at any point mm. did anyone say, no one should ever say I'm not right. You want to say I'm wrong, that's fine. Because I have an opinion, you have an opinion, and between the two, it's probably where the truth is. I'm probably 100%, I'm not 100% right, you're not 100% right. Yeah. This is where the truth is. But certain ideas, they're trying to tick off, off the list. No, they said they're transgender, so that's true, and you can't disagree with them because you're a bigot. And, and, and they'd say this, and you can't, you can't disagree because they said God's real with no proof, and you have to, mm. when you start doing that and, and putting these ideas in these safe spaces, yeah. and, and, and this word, that's thrown around a lot is tolerance. And I often say to people who, who use I'm them, an intolerant person. Yeah, people, yeah. Use, this, people <laughs> use this against me. You need to be more tolerant. And I say, why? Tell me how everyone, how, tell me how being tolerant of a man pretending he's a woman is good for anything. I'm not even saying he can't look like a woman. But tell me how it's bad. Well, it's bad because it's damaging the social fabric. It's damaging the, so, the society mm. as a whole mm. to have these ideas which must be force accepted. It's but what if he just wants to wear dresses and stuff? I'm not saying he can't. Okay. I'm, not, I'm, I'm never saying that a transgender can't go through that process. Mm. I'm telling you that no one should accept that you're a woman. Mm. You're, I actually, I welcome you. I'm not the person who's going to police your appearance. You want to look yeah. like a chick, fine. Mm. But not, never at any point am I going to believe for half a second you are a female. Because there are, um, you know, societies across the world where there is a third sex, where it's kind of in between. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's kind of a way to deal with pe men who like dressing as women. Yeah. And maybe, maybe you should try that. Well, I don't know what we should yeah. try, but I just know that if you want to come along and pretend you're a woman to me, you're absolutely not. Bruce mm -hmm. Jenner, or Caitlyn, whoever his name is, is a man, still is a man, managed to win Woman of the Year somehow, congratulations. <laughs> but you are a man, you retain, you stay as a man, and this whole left he's, Hollywood, he's I, I don't even know. Yeah. But even they cut it off, he's a dude. You know, DNA, yeah. biologically, you're a dude. Yeah. And, all, and all this left Hollywood bullshit society is going to try and say, he's a woman, he's a woman, you're a bigot. And I'm, I'm not buying it, and I refuse to buy it, and it's absolute garbage. It's completely not true. And I, I'm not going to bow. Sorry, JK. Fuck you. <laughs> um, so you're on Big, you, you're on big Brother yeah. and um, you got kicked pulled out. out. Yeah, kicked yeah. off. Because um, of the sex video. Could you no. just talk? Oh, that's not why I kicked off. Here's okay. the real reason I got kicked off. Okay. So that video, that girl from the sex video, there's actually been, if you Google Andrew Tate's girlfriend, there's been articles since where she's gone to the papers and said that was all fake. So that's the first thing. So everyone goes, you're a woman beater. Well, the girl herself's come out and said it's fake. Then everyone goes, you paid her to say that. So you can't, you can't please these trolls. So I don't even bother yeah. refuting it anymore. Um, I'm still good friends with her. I was with her yesterday. So, mm -hmm. and this is like two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. So we're still good friends anyway. The real reason I got kicked out of Big Brother is because I was too good at triggering everyone. So what happened was I was only in there for about nine days and four people walked out and every single man in there at some point had threatened me with violence. 
So they took me into the diary room and they said, we're really concerned about the dynamic of the house. This is all off camera. Yeah, yeah. I was like, well, you, well, the rules of Big Brother, we all signed a contract saying no one's allowed to make threats. I'm not threatening anybody. All these people are threatening me. You need to shut down their threats. I'm like, yeah, but people, you know, you're very controlled and they're more emotional and we just want to guarantee that in the event of an altercation, you won't hit anybody. So basically they said, oh, okay. we've got a whole bunch of idiots in here who can't control themselves, children. And if they swing for you, we want you to fl play Floyd Mayweather and do nothing about it for four and a half minutes while security turns up. And I said, no, I'm not going to start an argument, but if they're going to swing at me, they're going to get knocked the fuck out. I don't mm. know if there's two of them going to attack me. I ain't getting, my, getting punched on TV. I don't know what's going on. I don't know this guy. Maybe he knows something. Who the fuck? If you yeah, swing yeah. at me, I'm taking you out. So that's, that's my position. Okay. I'm not going to start it, but it, you know, as soon as they start running their mouth, you better send security in advance because I'm taking them out the game. And they, they must have sat around, all the producers sat around and thought, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Over the next three months, this is going to happen. Yeah, and so he's going to hurt them bad because they're all yeah. weaklings with big yeah. mouths. And, they, and because literally everybody was getting triggered and threatening me, like not just one, all of them, they thought, Do were we you want? enjoying that? I, I didn't give a shit. Yeah. I, it's not even enjoyment. I just don't just care. Just, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. So they, they sat and thought, this is a liability. We've got to get this guy out of here. So they, they used the sex tape as an excuse. Okay. So it was all bullshit. Yeah, because they really made out you'd beaten the woman up well, the early reports. Well, it's and, bullshit because yeah. the girl came forward and said it wasn't true. And they had a dominatrix in the house. And in, in, at the same time, Laura and Marco had a belt and were hitting each other on the show. It's all bullshit. Yeah, they didn't give a yeah, fuck about yeah. that. They just thought, this guy, man, this, this guy's too much for this show. He's yeah. too smart for these motherfuckers. We've got to get him out of here. So you were saying before the cameras rolled, you're considering retiring from kickboxing. Yeah. Could you talk us through that a little? Kickboxing has been such a massive part of my life. It's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to even say I'm retiring. A part of me wants, I don't know. I don't know, I, I, I can't even internalize it in my mind. Mm -hmm. I, it was much easier for me to turn up at the gym and train like I needed to train before I found the financial success I found. That's only partial to, to kickboxing. I've got some investments and things going on in Romania mm -hmm. and now I'm making money and I've got other things that I need to concentrate on. And if I don't, if I, if I fight, I lose focus somewhere else. And overall, I don't make any money. By the time mm -hmm. I get paid for the fight, I lost it somewhere else. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I just yeah, don't. Yeah. I always feel, I never wake up and think I have nothing to do today. Somehow yeah. I've always got something that needs to happen. Or, you know, I can load up chess and play chess for 12 hours, mm. you know, drink a bottle of vodka and get two or three big booty cuties around. It's fine, I'm not bored. <laughs> well, that sounds quite the lie. <laughs> it's all right. You know? well, would you consider yourself a role model for today's youth? Uh, I think that masculinity is, is being attacked from every front. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that is dangerous for society. I do think that the world has functioned, the societies have functioned, and humans have progressed so far with clear gender roles. I, I genuinely believe that. People mm -hmm. sit and say, gender roles aren't real. Well, if gender roles aren't real, please explain to me why in every civilization since the dawn of human time, men have had a role and women have had a role. This couldn't have been an idea that spread. The Aztecs didn't meet the Ming Dynasty. These are all the other side of the fucking mm -hmm. planet. They don't know each other. It's just they've naturally decided, well, men do this, and this is mm -hmm. how men are supposed to be, and this is how women are supposed to be. I think masculinity is being attacked. And I don't know where that's going to lead, but from the things I've seen so far with all this transgender and jumping all over the place and all this craziness, mm. I don't see anything good coming from it. What I do see is history where we managed to build the Great Wall of China and go to the moon with, with gender roles. So we, we populated the whole planet. We see, fought saber-toothed tigers. Yeah. We invented vaccination. We did all these yeah. great things with gender roles. Yeah. And I want to come and say, no, that has to change. And I'm like, why? But I guess someone would argue <laughs> that, you know, like, <coughs> interested in science, like Marie Curie, yeah. she, you know, she had a harder time as a woman being a scientist yeah. than she would have been a man, and that could have been, yeah. you know, uh, detrimental to humanity. So no, that's, a ma that's a very good point, and I'm yeah. not saying that we should, obviously we should take into the fact that, you know, we should yeah. take new things into account, etc. Yeah. but to sit and say, men shouldn't act masculine in any form, mm. I, I think that's dangerous. I've said, mm. why? Men, mm. you know, men being masculine have done great things for the world, and I guarantee... Whoever's tweeting that shit, when they're stuck in a fire and they're waiting for the firefighter to kick that door down, they're hoping he's a big, strong man who can carry him. They're hoping he's not a little female transgender lesbian. They want to be a dude who's ready to risk his life, yeah. you know, for your life. So to sit and say masculine, people say toxic masculinity, and I, I've tried to even Google what this is. To me, all I see is, well, masculinity. Mm. Being a man in any form is now mm. toxic. Mm. And it's crazy. Men have a role to fill as much as women have a role to fill. Women have a, a purpose and a role to fill, and femininity is very important, and so is masculinity. Do you think so, there's a crisis in masculinity uh, across the Western world? Well, you actually you just said yeah. there is, but um, why, why do you think that is? Who, who's behind it? You know, That's a very good question. Yeah. Now, I could be a conspiracy theorist Yeah, you're going to get it. a tinfoil hat on. All right, so if I, <laughs> if I were to put my tinfoil hat on, I genuinely believe that society as a whole is much easier to control when you remove the warriors of a society. That's the truth. In, in the olden days when men revolted or men rioted, 
governments changed. Like, things happened. Mm. Nowadays, when the vegans go rioting, who gives a shit? No one. So it's, it's different when, when men existed and, and, and the, the modern version of yeah. men. I think society as a whole is much easier to control. I think lower testosterone levels mean that as a whole, people are far more easy to subvert. They, they accept things they wouldn't previously accept. Mm. And I, I say this because as living in Eastern Europe where men are still men, the reason they don't have any of the immigration or, or refugee problems is if they tried that shit over there, if they even tried it, mm. do you have, they wouldn't last. Like the men would just wait and say, you killed how many of our children? They'd be gone overnight to fuck mm. them up. I'm not saying it's right. I'm telling you what would have happened. I'm mm. not saying it's correct. I'm not advocating it. I'm not saying we should do it. I'm telling you what would happen in these countries. Mm. In our country, we're like, oh, well, let's just hope no one says anything racist. And that's all they give a shit about. And, and, and you know, when people's fit, children are dead. And, and this is what happens when you remove the warrior instinct from men, you remove the warriors of the society, and a society will buy any bullshit you throw at them. Doesn't matter what you do to them, they'll lap it up. Mm. You remove the warriors of a population, you can do anything you want. You can do anything you want to them. Mm. The fact that England for so long even put up with Brussels and their bullshit, like people complaining about Brexit, mm. but you know, Brussels, you, a completely different country to making up your laws. If we put up for that for so long. We could argue for a few hours on that. Yeah. So we'll, okay. we'll, we'll move swiftly but, on. <laughs> But, you know, it's, I'm just saying, I yeah. think if you remove the warriors I, of a country... I agree with, you know, like wage stagnation yeah. and, you know, people, you know, men won't, don't do the traditional jobs, like still working coal yeah. mining, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And they've lost their place in the world to yeah. an extent. Absolutely. And, you know, you could, and there, yeah, it is a bit tinfoily, but you could argue that it could be deliberate because if you've got an, a, a population you can't support with like, you know, on decent wages yeah. and stuff like that, you, you, you know, in the old days, like you said, they'd be rioting. Even 30 years ago, they'd be rioting. And this, and this, yeah. and look, I'm an immigrant from America. My father's yeah. black, I'm mixed race. Yeah. Don't call me racist, because I'm not. My yeah, best yeah. friend's Muslim, my trainer, Amir, he's a Bosnian Muslim, so okay. I'm not racist. So, yeah. but this immigration thing and all that kind of thing that's going down, once again, females, never since the dawn of history, have ever had the responsibility of being protective of a territory. Females are not territorial by instinct. That's a man's mm. job. Mm. Men are territorial. So the only people who should be concerned with the literal invasion of this country, and I'm going to call it an invasion because when you have a large percentage of the population who are prepared to kill themselves to kill you, that's an invasion. It doesn't matter if there's a thousand of them or 500, whatever. When there's a percentage of a population prepared to kill you by any means necessary, to mm -hmm. a degree you've been invaded. So there's, if there's a problem in this country, only men are the people who are territorial enough to stand up and do something about it. And when a man decides to say anything even about the issue, He's branded instantly a bigot and a racist. And I think, well, what, why would you that, do, what would you do? Well, that's a very good question. Yeah. But I think the first thing we need to do is, is absolutely be respectful and patriotic about the sovereignty of the country. And even that doesn't exist nowadays. Mm. You ask the type, typical English person, like, do you, are, you know, are you proud of me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but, no, but, you know, you have to but be... I think jingoism and patriotism can often be used by people who haven't got the best interests of the people at, at heart. Completely and that, that's why I always shy away from, you know, sort of, you know, what waving the flag because it's a version of England that my, I probably don't agree with. No, I completely yeah. agree. And this is the number one problem with the right as a whole is yeah. that when I say these things, what I'm actually saying is we need to include the Muslim community to the point where th we understand what Britishness is, not to the point where they don't speak English and they don't give a fuck what country they're in as long as they get to go to the mosque. Mm. That's not British. We yeah. need to include the Muslim community to the point where when they do hear something of an extremist nature, they're straight on the phone. Because when someone mm. says to me, well, no one knew anything, he's a lone wolf. Bullshit. There, That's there, bullshit. But so, there, there is a lot, to be fair, you know, there is a lot of, you know, people dobbing other people in. It does happen quite a lot. Because, you know, the, the guy in Manchester, you know, people were ringing up about him and yeah. they, they weren't doing anything about it. My, yeah. my very simple view on it is that the only people who can fix Islamic extremism are Muslims. Yeah, exactly. I, I cannot come along and tell yeah. an Islamic extremist that he's wrong about the Quran. He would not respect tell my Tell him opinion. about depression. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> tell him about pretty much everything else. <laughs> but um, only Muslims can fix this. So yeah. it is an Islamic problem. I'm not saying that they're all terrorists. I'm thinking it's an Islamic yeah. problem that must be fought, fixed with, yeah, with fixed Islamic. Within the community, yeah. So yeah, but people are so cowardly nowadays, they don't even want to stand up and say it's an Islamic problem. They don't even mm. want to diagnose the problem. Mm. If you have a business and the problem's in manufacturing, but you don't want to, know what, you don't want to even diagnose what the problem is, you want to start mm. yelling at the sales guys. Your business is going to I think fail. people are just scared that, you know, if you, when you say stuff like that, is that people tend to think that you meet all Muslims. Every single Muslim in the country is now a, exactly. a problem. And yeah. when you say these things, you attract the genuine racists. Yeah, yeah. And they ally with you. Like, I've tried to say some of these things before, saying we need to work closely with the Islamic community, and it is an Islamic problem, and only, only us working closely with the Muslims will fix it. Yeah. Then someone, kill all the Muslims! Like, that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so you do get those guys, and they discredit your whole argument. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so it is difficult. Yeah. But... As a whole, even just the immigration thing, even the, the wage stagnation, lots of things that are happening within this country, 
it's the fact that oh, they, get, it's, it's, they get away with them because yeah. they've removed the warrior spirit from, from males. And when you do that, you can do whatever you want. This is a question that I probably know the answer already. Would you consider yourself an angry person? I think that the word angry can be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I think I'm an angry person, but I genuinely enjoy being an angry person. People assume anger is quite a sad, low frequency emotion. Whereas I think anger is an extremely energetic emotion. Mm -hmm. I was a fantastic kickboxer because I'm angry. Like the only thing that will get you out of bed and go to the gym at six in the morning when you're fucked and you don't want to and you've literally got a broken ankle is just waking up and just being pissed off. Like it's always done me well. Yeah. Like I don't have a criminal record. I've never attacked anybody. I have mm. self-control just because I don't externalize my problems. I don't believe I have an anger issue. I don't externalize it like the depression idiots do. I mm. understand who I am. Yeah. I've never lost my control in any, tem in any situation where I shouldn't have. But I think anger is an extremely powerful source. I think it's an amazing part yeah. of unlimited energy. Yeah. And it's a great thing to have if you can attribute it in the right direction. Yeah, you know, like, like, like I, I genuinely, even when I was kickboxing, before I had money, I genuinely used to get angry I had no money. Like, like, like people, a Ferrari would drive past, people would go, oh, a Ferrari, and I'd be, that'd ruin my day. I was like, fuck. Yeah, because you want how, a how, Ferrari. Yeah, yeah, like, how does he have a quarter of a million for a car, and I don't? Like, and, 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 and it really used to make me, and people go, well, why are you pissed off? I was like, no, don't you understand? This dude's doing something, we're not doing. And everyone yeah. else is just like, mm. for me, I was like, no, no, yeah. there's got to be something here. Yeah. And then there's a way to get there. Isn't yeah, it? and then and now I have one. And it was like, oh, you're lucky. He's like, no, I've been thinking about this for ten fucking years. So yeah. I don't say it's luck. Yeah. You know, it's it's a long process, and I really genuinely wanted it, and now I've got it. Yeah. So and have you ever crashed any of your cars? Never, never had a car crash. Touch wood. I'll never crash. I'm too good for that <laughs> shit. Okay, rounding up. Um, so obviously, because of your reputation, some people who might consider themselves depressed yeah. will be watching this video. Yeah. Have you got a message to the sad, depressed person in? Michigan. Oh, hello, Michigan. I'd be depressed too. Um, <laughs> you've got a choice. You've got a choice. You have a choice to make. You, you have a choice to make every day you get out of bed. You can accept you're depressed or you can fix it. This is a choice you have to make. The same thing about being depressed, fat, lonely, sad, Ill, Ill, Ill educated, anything. You have a choice to make and you can make it. If you're really looking for people who are going to bother to push you across that line, maybe you have an amazing family, maybe you have an amazing spouse, maybe you do but most people really cannot be asked to lead the horse to water. It's down to you to do it. And mm -hmm. you, can, you can come at me, feel free to tweet at me, all your excuses, get them all prepared and put them in nice tweets, do a nice thread, tweet them at me, because when you're finished tweeting, nothing's gonna change. You're still gonna be depressed, I'm still gonna be happy, and you're still gonna be sitting there with all your excuses as a loser. So you can make your choice how you wanna live your life. It's really that simple. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>